Have you ever wondered what the loudest plane ever made was? Perhaps it's a jet engine plane, a supersonic plane, something like the Concorde. You might be surprised to know that it's actually a propeller plane that goes by the nickname of the Thunder Screech. In the 60s, the U.S. Army, or I guess rather the Air Force, decided that they were going to try to build a plane that was turboprop powered. But of course, this plane had to be extremely fast. And the result was the Thunder Screech turboprop aircraft. It had a propeller that rotated at supersonic speeds so that you could literally see the shock waves from the sound barrier being broken, spreading out from around the propeller. Uh, and uh, supposedly, these shock waves had more than enough force to knock over a man on the ground crew. Now, today, I decided what better way to appreciate the thunder screech than to try to build it and fly it around and fly out. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. Here it is, everybody, the thunder screech. We are currently right about at the speed of sound, or pretty close to it at least. You can see the, the cone from breaking the sound barrier on the front of the plane there. And we've got the, the propeller spinning up front and currently the way it's equipped, there's actually an afterburner on the jet engine which is coming out the back. Let's do a nice, uh, let's do a nice flyby view here. Hang on. I gotta trim this properly before I can do it. There we go. <laughs> Here we come, guys. Dang, that thing is moving. Look at it go. Wow. All right, all right, let's do another. Let's turn this way. Can do a nice little. <laughs> wow. Man, it scrubs off speed fast when you turn, though. It's very maneuverable. I'm, I'm surprised. Fun to fly. So, the real-life Thunder Screech was capable of going 520 miles an hour. Theoretically. They only test flew it a few times because the noise from it was so obnoxious that no one could stand it. I mean, literally the loudest plane ever made. I, it's insane. This thing's pretty darn loud itself. I mean, but it is pretty cool looking. And technically we're cheating a bit with that afterburner, but hey, anything for speed. The real thing was also known to have suffered from some aerodynamic instability this does as well. I'll show you guys a takeoff here. So taking off in this is particularly hard because for some reason, probably having to do with the propeller, it likes to roll as soon as you take off. So I have to trim it a whole bunch. So roll has to be trimmed to like negative 15 for takeoff to even be possible here. All right, let's power it up. Oh boy, this might be bad. Okay, okay, stabilize. Oh, and she's done. There he is. The little man. I always forget his name. Is it Jimmy? I think it's Jimmy. What's up, man? How you doing? <laughs> he looks terrified. All right, let's try that again. Let's try that again. All right, I'm doing our little pre-flight trim here. And then I'm going to turn this. And let's power it up. Get a decent run up going on the runway. There we go. Not bad. All right, gently pitch up. There it is. Nice. Oh, beautiful takeoff. Pitch down. Now you'll notice I'm using the trim controls here to control the plane. It's a lot less jerky than the normal controls. I'm sure there's an even better way to do that. But hey, I don't know how to do it, so. <laughs> All right, let's take this thing in a straight line and see how fast she'll get going. So actually, it will pitch up for a bit. 
you have to admit, really, really cool looking plane. It's almost it almost resembles at least the fuselage, the ME262 uh, that was built by Germany during World War II, which I believe was the first jet-powered fighter to ever see combat. If I could be wrong, you know, fact check me. But it's just such a cool looking plane. I mean, it does definitely have its issues, but it looks pretty darn cool. All right, let's pull up. Let's get going. There we go. And then we're gonna do a nice nose dive and see just how fast this thing will go. Okay. Here we go. All right, let's nose dive. Pitch down. Oh, okay. Might lose control here. She's not a fan. There we go. Okay, nice steady descent. Okay. That should do it. Three sixty six, three seventy. Oh, we're never gonna make that. Okay. <laughs> I killed my test pilot. I'm sorry, guys. So if you have a really good eye, you'll notice at the beginning of this video that the propeller that I put in the Thunder Screech initially is actually not driven by the turbine engine at all. There is a piston engine behind it, which is just a little bit sneaky. But I decided uh, after I had gotten the propeller working, you know, that's not really a faithful turboprop at all. So I went ahead and removed the piston engine and then switched the turbine over to be a power turbine. So we now have a true turboprop aircraft instead of one that's just pretending to be a turboprop. What will be interesting is to see whether this increases or decreases the performance of the plane and how it changes its flight characteristics. All right, folks, so I went ahead and made some changes here. You will have seen them in the build time lapse just before this, but the biggest thing is I went ahead and removed the piston engine that was driving the propeller previously, and now we have a turboprop truly driving the propeller. That also means we no longer have the afterburner out the back, so I want to see how that's affected our speed. I have a feeling this thing is going to be insane. And it looks like it's okay, okay. Trim, 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 trim. Trim, 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 up. Oh my lord, it is hard to control. Okay, all right, trim. Oh wow. Seems pretty stable. Oh, the afterburner is still working. Oh my god. Okay, it's gotten faster for sure. A quick climb to 2,000 meters. We are exceeding Mach 1 right now. This thing is fast. Holy cow. I have to look up what 520 miles per hour is in meters per second. Oh, is the propeller still spinning or has it stopped? It appears to have stopped. Hang on, has it stopped? I'm so confused right now. It looks like the blades have gone completely straight. Maybe that's maybe that's how it works and I'm just not aware. Well, let's see. Looks like we're going Mach 1.5. 400, oh my, 480 meters per second. Okay, well, now I need to figure out how fast this thing is capable of actually going. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Why is it slowing down now? Oh, it's run out of fuel. Oh my god, it ran out of fuel that quickly? And the propeller is spinning back up. Maybe, maybe... I don't know, guys. Something funky just happened with that. I'm gonna have to look into that. Maybe it's a maybe it's a variable pitch propeller and that's what we're dealing with here. Okay, well this this warrants some looking into. 
Okay, so it was indeed a variable pitch propeller. So you can see here in the pitch section, obviously, if I would read, uh, so we can set how it responds. So either target RPM, centrifugal, or Mach. So I had it set on Mach, which means that depending on the Mach number that we're currently going, which is dependent on a bunch of other factors, such as, you know, the uh, density of the air and all that, it'll change the pitch. Instead, I'm just going to leave them fixed at 35 degrees, which I, I'm saying <laughs> most likely that this is going to cause us a lot of drag because 35 degrees, when we're going Mach 1.5, that's going to be a little ridiculous. Also, we're going to need way more fuel. So I'm gonna go ahead and make these just a little bit bigger because we ran through all of our fuel in like less than a minute last time. So hopefully this is enough. I wanna keep them like relatively integrated with the fuselage. And I also just wanna say for all the people that love to be all like lore accurate and historical, at this point we've departed the realm of realism a little bit. This is inspired by the Thunder Screech at this point, but not actually the Thunder Screech. So let's see how capable it really is. Okay, this is going to be interesting. Okay, it is not even going to get off the ground. Okay, hang on. Okay, we have the rolling problem again. It has to do with the propeller. I'm, I'm thinking like the torque of the, uh, the propeller and the gearbox and everything. So let's trim the roll a whole bunch to the left. We'll trim the pitch up. Steer this way. Man, this thing is unwieldy. Okay, all right, buddy. Just a little bit, just a little tiny bit. Okay, up, 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 there you go. Trim. Okay, we gotta fly by trim here for a minute. Okay, all right, there we go. We are moving now. Okay, oh, I didn't realize the throttle wasn't all the way up. Okay, okay, this is gonna get out of control really fast. That propeller is cooking, oh my gosh. This thing is absurd. Okay, here comes Mach 1. At sea level, Mach 1 is 343 meters per second. We've just crossed that. Oh my god. There's no way the propeller is doing anything other than creating drag. I mean, can you guys hear that? I hope not, because it's really annoying. 365, 366, 367. Oh my God. We're not even at altitude. You can see our fuel percentage down here. We've already used 60% of our fuel. All right, we're gonna try something. Let's climb to a higher altitude and see if that affects our performance here. Okay, there we go, we're climbing. Climb to about 5,000 meters. It is such a cool looking plane. It's got a very space age look to it which I just love. I mean, I think style is really important. If you're a regular watcher of the channel, you know that. I think form is almost as important as function, sometimes more important. We're still, I mean, we're still traveling. What is this, like Mach 0.6 probably? Let's go up to 7,500 meters and then we'll level off. Okay, leveling off nicely. We're gonna pitch up a little more. Okay. We're still gaining altitude, but not as quickly. All right. Okay, start leveling off now. And let's just lay into it. Okay. See how fast this baby can go. <laughs> 
Come on, Jim. Let's do a flyby. 355, 356. Holy cow. Did you guys hear the sonic boom? 374. Okay, I gotta hear that again. That was so cool. An actual sonic boom. Okay, here we come. What's that in the distance, guys? Is that a propeller plane? That is so cool. <laughs> so cool. Looks like we topped out at about 374 meters per second, but I'm gonna take us into a bit of a dive here and see if we can accelerate a little more. Wow, look at that thing go. 386, 387, 391. Let's do another flyby shot. Coming right at the ground. Look at that nice dead level there. Here she comes. 392 meters per second, and now we're starting to slow down. Okay, pull up, buddy. Wow, look at that thing go. Let's make a little turn here. Wow. It's almost like so much easier to fly with the trim than it is to just give it control input directly. There we go. Oh, we're almost killing him in there. And we're out of fuel. Wow, I'm on the edge of my seat. <laughs> that was quite a difficult flight. Now in typical uh, Aquilae company fashion, let's end this flight appropriately with a little smash. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, we're rolling around. Oh boy. Oh boy. Nice. How you holding up there, buddy? Looks like you survived just fine. Looks fine to me. So guys, I, I have to tell you something. I've just discovered something. So I should have, before I recorded this video, looked at how many miles per hour or how many meters per second is 520 miles per hour, which was the stated top speed of the XF84H Thunder Screech. 520 miles per hour is only 230 meters per second. If you recall, we went about mm, 395 meters per second, which is more like 880 miles per hour. I thought we were under target. We are actually way over target. Now keep in mind, that this is technically, I mean, it's not purely propeller powered because this turbine in here, in addition to powering the propeller, it is acting as a turbine as well. And I believe it still has an afterburner on it, although I am not 100%, it does, um, which is not, not very historically accurate. But hey, we have a propeller plane that can go almost 900 miles an hour. So I think that's pretty cool. I also think stuff like this is symbolic of a bit of a bygone era where engineers decided we're going to do something not because it makes sense or because, you know, we should, but just because we can. And stuff like that leads to really, really cool planes just like this one, even if this one could never be successful in the real world. But anyway, I love cool experimental aircraft, and I plan on building lots more in flyout. So if you have requests, leave them in the comments below. I will build either a historically faithful version, or if what happens here happens again, a ridiculously overbuilt kind of stupid version. <laughs> but uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said, if you have suggestions for aircraft, drop them below. I'll try to get to them. And I have some more ideas up my sleeve, but you'll just have to wait and see what they are. So thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope you have a wonderful day.